Good day. This is my first video lecture and it is entitled General Principles of Taxation. By the way, I'm Glitzmar B. Kasama. And you're welcome to play and replay in order to master the topic. So first off, I would like to tell you that this lecture is composed of three parts. The first part is where we are going to answer why do we need to pay taxes. The second part is we are going to dig deeper on the nature of taxation and part three is all about other concepts that we need to understand. So enjoy. So let's go to part one. Why do we need to pay taxes? In order to answer that, let's define first taxation. Taxation is an enforced collection of money for the government to function. Yeah, the question is, nga naman dahil dayon o mufunction ng government? Do we enjoy benefits? The answer is yes. And there are a lot of examples. The first one is public order and public safety. This is very necessary, labi na ka dun, that we have our pandemic and we don't have any vaccine. So the government is in charge for promoting the public order and public safety. Now, in order to have this, they need to spend, for example, in the social amelioration program as well as for the salaries of the military and the PNP. The second is, the government is responsible for making infrastructures like roads, like bridges and school buildings, and a lot more. The government needs funds also to offer free education. In the past, we are already enjoying free elementary and free high school. Karun, the government is trying hard to make the college free also. Aside from that, the government helps control inflation and the economy. Let's focus on the inflation. Karun, there are a lot of items na mahal, like for example, the alcohol and the masks, and if the government is not there to control its prices, na there will be public chaos. Fifth is the shifting of wealth. So there are a lot of conflicts and problems na nahitabo sa past because the large amount of wealth belongs to a small number of people only. So, the government functions uh, to shift wealth from the rich to the poor by taxing them more kaysa sa mga pobre. And there are a lot more. So, in conclusion, we need the government to function. And in order for the government to function, we need to pay for taxes. So, kana siya is a layman's explanation. Of course, on the question, why do we need to pay tax, na ipinabright na version. Actually, you can answer this question by using the theories of taxation. So, there are three theories of taxation. The first one is necessity theory which states that funds are needed by the government to continue serving and protecting all of its citizens and properties. The second theory states that taxation is the lifeblood of the government. So, people cannot live without blood. Also, the government cannot survive without it. And that is what we call as lifeblood theory. The third one is benefits received theory. Actually, the government gives us benefits of an organized society. So we need to pay for it. So actually, the benefits received theory is centered on symbiotic relationship. The government needs us and we need the government. So this is how you answer. Why do we need to pay for taxes using the theories of taxation? So let's go to part 2 because we're already through with part 1. What is the nature of taxation? So there are characteristics of taxation. So if you are asked to describe taxation, you need to remember meal. 
meal is a mnemonic that we are going to use. We're going to use mnemonics in order for you to familiarize or memorize the concepts. So M stands for money. I stands for inherent power of the state. L stands for legislative in nature. And another L stands for it is limited by constitutional and inherent limitations. Let's elaborate. Taxes are generally payable in money. I have not heard Bureau of Internal Revenue or Bureau of Customs collecting taxes in kind or in services. Next is inherent power of the state. So that means the taxation power is already there when the state was born. However, there are three inherent powers of the state and we need to be able to familiarize and master those. So let's talk about the powers of the state and their nature. So there are three powers of the state. The first one is taxation. As mentioned earlier, is just the power to enforce contributions to raise government funds. The second power is the police power. And although others are thinking that it's related to PNP or safety or crime division, it is broader. Although protection and safety is under this one, but generally it's for the promotion of general welfare and progress of the public. Let's say, for example, uh, it talks about the progress and protection and safety of senior citizens, youth, and all of the citizens in the Philippines. It also is the power to regulate or control the society. The last power is the eminent domain which is just the power of the government to take private property for public use with just compensation so let's say for example you have a land and you have the title to that land the government can take it however the government can only take it for public use let's say for example they took the land in order to make it a public school that's for public use but if they're going to take it to make it a mansion of a certain congressman or senator that's not for public use so they they can't take it under the eminent domain power and of course the government could not take it if it will not pay for just compensation so these are the three inherent powers of the state when the state was born, kakambal na ni silang tulo. So, these are the basic concepts of these powers. And we are still on stage 1. So, if we wanted to have a deeper understanding on these powers, we need to go to the stage 2 of our discussion. We need to compare and contrast the three based on Natera PPSB, another mnemonic that you need to remember. So, these are the three powers, taxation, police, and eminent domain. So, let's compare and contrast them as to N, nature. So, we have already discussed this. Taxation is the power to enforce contributions to raise government funds. The police power is the power to make and implement laws for the general welfare. And eminent domain is the power to take private property for public use with just compensation. Let's go to A, authority. Who has the authority to implement these powers? Taxation powers can be implemented by the government only. Police power can also be implemented only by the government. The imminent domain power can be delegated to public service or utility companies. Let's go to T, the type of property. 
if the government acquires asset while exercising taxation powers the assets acquired by the government is treated as wholesome and is intended for public use or purpose pero if nakakuha ang government ng assets while exercising police power the assets acquired by the government is considered noxious and is intended for noxious use or purpose tapos it is destroyed example of this one is when the government nakakuha sila o drugs or smuggled goods those acquisition of the government is considered under police power so those things are destroyed but if the government acquires an asset by exercising eminent domain the asset or the property acquired by the government is wholesome and is intended for public use or purpose let's go to e the effect the assets collected under taxation power by the government will become part of the public fund the assets acquired by the government by exercising police power is being taken away without the transfer of title because again those are not shoes the property that is being taken by the government under eminent domain there is a transfer of title from the private entity or private individual to the government so that's the effect we have the rights affected so when the government exercises these powers rights of the citizens are affected in the taxation power the citizen's property right is affected while in the police power if the government exercises its police power the property and liberty of the citizens are affected because again the police power is promotion of general welfare of the public so meaning you have unlimited choices you have right to do all the things except when the right of another starts of course if the government exercises eminent domain the property rights of the citizens are affected so wala pa na human so let's go to the powers of the state stage two tapos atong i-continue because natter patataman again the three powers are taxation police and eminent domain so let's go to a amount imposed when we talk about taxes there is no limit because it depends on your income whereby on the police power it is limited that is sufficient only to cover the cost of license and regulation as i mentioned earlier the police power is para sa sa regulation and control in the society so one way of doing that is issuance of licenses like for example driver's license or prc license magkuha ganit ka na ng mga lisensya limited lang ang i-charge sa imo that is sufficient to cover the cost of the license and regulation of course sa eminent domain wala yung amount imposed kaya ikaw pa ganit mo yung og property tapos mag-impose pa sila og amount next we have purpose the purpose of taxation is to support the government in its expenses so police power the purpose of that one is the promotion of general welfare through regulation and eminent domain is just a mere taking of private property for public purpose who are the persons affected the persons affected sa taxation all or a community or a class of persons sa police power is the same all or a community or a class of persons pero pag eminent domain 
specific property right lang of a person not all the properties of a person the specific property right lang because dili man tanan kuha on sa government the scope if we talk about taxation the taxation is plenary comprehensive and supreme when we say plenary it's complete comprehensive it covers a large amount of subjects dili lang few like for example a corporate income tax is applied to all of the corporations inside the philippines and it is supreme because of the three inherent powers sa ang pinakakusgan let's go to the police power its scope is a general power to implement the law ang eminent domain the scope is just mere taking of property for public use and the last the b is the benefits received by the citizens because of these powers so because of the taxation power when you pay taxes you receive protection and government services that's the benefit that you're going to receive in the police power there is no direct or immediate benefit however there is a maintenance of a healthy economic standard of the society and in the eminent domain the only benefit that you're going to receive is the just compensation which is equivalent to the market value of the property so that's it for the inherent powers of the state so let's go back here on the characteristics of taxation so we already discussed the number one that the taxes are generally payable in money we also have discussed thoroughly that taxation is an inherent power of the state actually we have compared it with other powers like police powers and eminent domain so let's go to number three taxation is legislative in nature but we will not be able to fully appreciate that statement if ever we're not going to discuss the branches of the government so there are three branches of the government we have the legislative branch which is the lawmaking branch of the government it is composed of the house of representatives or the congress as well as the senate or the upper house now we have also the executive department its job is to implement the laws passed by the legislative branch so ang head sa legislative is the president of the philippines and under him are the department secretaries the commissioners and the bureaus and the last branch is the judiciary in which ang task ng judiciary or the courts is to resolve misunderstandings in the interpretation and implementation of the law so to give you a little bit of details sa passing of the law sa ta, let's say for example there is a law that needs to be passed so it will start with the legislative branch in the congress and the senate they are to be called bills kay kanang wa pa napasar bills and tawag so there is a congress version normally and a senate version so of course this version has differences so what will happen is if there are differences they are going to have a bicameral meeting until those differences are resolved and after those differences are resolved ipapasa na, na sa president of the philippines for signature and then it will become a law so the president is not just related to executive but also he is part of the legislative however the president has the power to veto the laws passed by the legislative pero dili man absolute na permitting makababag ang president because if di ganahan ang president ana the congress may vote 
and if the majority wants to pass the law then it will become a law so that's it another fact is even if um, it was signed by the president and it has become a law sometimes there are some gray areas or things that needs to be specified para walay gray areas so the executive branch sometimes maghimo ng mga guidelines and memorandum orders tapos on the implementation if there are misunderstandings and alleged violations bahala na si judiciary or si courts mag decide so that's the basic on the branches of the government now the question is how is it related to taxation so if we're going to take a look at the stages of taxation you will realize that number one the stage one is levy before you can collect tax there should be a valid tax law in the levy stage it involves the passage of tax laws or ordinances through the legislation so it is directly related in here it's a legislative branch stage two of taxation is the assessment and collection this is where taxes are computed and efforts for collection is made and this is normally done by the executive branch and the third stage is the payment of tax which will be done not by the judiciary but of course by the subject of taxation however we might need to elaborate further the levy portion again the first stage or aspect of taxation is levy let's talk about facts the first fact is the levy is the stage where the congress and the senate pass tax laws what are the details included in their tax bill so we have our mnemonic so that it's not difficult to memorize the sm spark stands for the subject m manner of collection s situs of taxation p purpose of tax a apportionment of tax r rate or amount of tax and k is kind of tax money or nodes ilang tax bill so let's elaborate kung ano saan sila isa-isa first one subject it answers the question unsa may taxan is it a person or property ba or right nakabutang sab sa tax building manner of collection which is isa sa mga examples naman sila sa manner of collection is it to be collected annually quarterly or monthly as well as kinsa may mag collect BIR or local government unit ba nakapaloob sab sa tax bill nila ang situs of taxation which answers asa man dapit taxan ang subject so we need to elaborate this further because this is very important so situs of taxation example if ang taxa na to is person, haman sa taxan, of course, based sa residence of that person. Example, ang community tax na bayaran or ang sidula. Magbayad ka na kung hain ka nakapuyo na barangay. So, if the subject of taxation also is real property or tangible personal property, haman sa ka magbayad og tax, of course, sa locality in which the real property or the personal property is makita. 3. Intangible personal property. Of course, 
ang basihan kung hain magbayad is ang domicile of the owner. Pag business taxes atong isgutan, we need to take a look at the place of business. Kaya dito na sila magbayad ng taxes. Number five is all about income taxes. Nakapula na siya kay lahi ni siya. Di na ito kinahalan i-specify pag ayo ang income taxes because this is a national tax. So, ang ato ng concern, is it taxable under Philippine tax laws or not? So, actually, it depends on the citizenship kung kinsa man ang naka-income, ang residency po dana, and the source of income kung within ba the Philippines or outside the Philippines. So, in order to discuss further, These are the details. If you're a Filipino and you are living also here in the Philippines, meaning you're a Filipino resident and you have income within the Philippines, it's taxable. Pero pag sa gawas, ni mo nakita, it's still taxable. If you are a Filipino, pero nakasagawas you are a non-resident Filipino for example you are an OFW tapos as an OFW you have income sources within the Philippines kay nakapatukod na kinta ka og apartment and you're collecting rent kana ng income ni mo within the Philippines is taxable pero ang imong income outside the Philippines is not taxable now if you are an alien alien that means you are a foreigner And you are a resident of the Philippines. Puyo ka dili ah. Any income ni mo found in the Philippines is taxable. Pero kung outside source of income na not taxable na. And if you are an alien, again, a foreigner, not a Filipino citizen, and you're not living here, however, you have some investments here. So, mo income with Kaderia. So, those income within the Philippines is also taxable. Pero, ang imong income sa gawas sa Philippines is already na taxable. You can summarize this. So, pag income ang hisgutan, regardless of whether you are an alien, a Filipino, a resident, or a non-resident citizen, then... If you have income within the Philippines, those are all taxable. However, you will not be taxed sa imong income na imong na-earn outside the Philippines. That's the general. However, the exception is if you are a Filipino resident citizen, you'll be taxable. So that's for income. Number six, we have transfer tax. Dili sa Philippines, pag mag-transfer ka og property, for example, in by way of donation, taxan ang donor. So, depende na gihapon sa citizenship, residency, and kung hain makita ng property na i-donate within the Philippines ba na property or property ni mo outside the Philippines. So, it depends on the transfer of, for example, ako, I'm a Filipino, and I'm a resident here in the Philippines, and the property within the Philippines na, na ako'y gusto na property ihatag to another, then I'll be taxable. And if I have some properties outside of the country also, niya ako asang ihatag, i-donate, taxable giha po na na transfer If I'm a Filipino non-resident OFW ko and I have property here in the Philippines tas akong ihatag to someone then that transfer is also taxable If my property is outside the Philippines may gusto na ko i-donate that is still taxable If I'm an alien and I'm a resident in the Philippines, the property that will be donated is within the Philippines, that's taxable. If the property also is found outside the Philippines, it's still taxable. If I'm a foreigner, and I don't live here also, 
and I wanted to donate something to someone. And that property is found in the Philippines that is still taxable. But if the property that I'm going to donate is found outside the Philippines, it's not taxable. So that's all for situs of taxation. This is very important na ma-familiarize because sa so further topics, uh, this will play a very important role. So kinahang lang ma-familiarize. So transfer tax, you can uh, summarize this one into everything is taxable, whether property within the Philippines and property outside the Philippines. Everything is taxable regardless of whether you're a Filipino, a resident, non-resident except for if you are an alien and you are non-resident uh, properties that you are going to donate which are found outside the country is not taxable under philippine tax laws so let's go back so malato ang societies of taxation it is still found on the tax bill the next is within the tax bill it is also indicated kung sa purpose sa tax. Is it for additional revenues or is it for regulatory purpose lang? So actually, the primary role of taxes is for revenues to be used by the government. Ang ikaduhan niya na purpose is a regulatory purpose. Next, under the tax bill, dapat ilasang masulti kung sa apportionment of tax. Is it going to benefit a certain locality? or the general or national. So, as far as I know, the example of this one is kanang nakolekta sa BIR. Kanang nakolekta sa BIR na revenues is apportioned into 60% sa LGUs and 40% sa national. 60% sa LGUs, that means the 60% na nakolekt ng BIR will go to municipalities, cities, and barangays. Ang 60%, ang 40% will go to the national like sweldo sa mga sinudor and others next na mabutang liha sa tax bill kung unsa ang rate or amount of tax fix ba ang amount or fix ba ang rate or progressive ba siya pag may ingunta o progressive that means the higher the value the higher the income for example the higher ang tax rate or regressive, the higher the amount na basihan, mas gamay ang tax rate. Or graduated ba siya? Pag may yung graduated murag na i-table-table, na range-range. For example, if your income is 0 to 250,000, wala kay bayaran na tax. But if it is 250 to 500, for example, you're gonna pay 10%. So that's an example sa graduated. Now, appeal sub sa tax bill kung unsa nga kind of tax ang ilahang ginasulong. So, we have different types of taxes. Kinahanglan nato na sab sila i-elaborate. So, these are the kind of taxes based, of course, on classification. So, para dali na ma-memorize na is PG daw. Muna itong mnemonics ka ron. So, S stands for the subject matter. Number one, as to subject matter, the tax classifications are personal, poll, or capitation tax. Uh, this is the tax kung ang person ang imong taxan. It is defined as, this is a fixed tax imposed upon an individual residing within a specified territory regardless of their citizenship, property owned or occupation so ang example ani is ang community tax or ang sa cedula it doesn't care kung unsa ka na citizen or doesn't care kung na ba kay mga properties daghan or unsa imong trabaho magbayad gid ka ng cedula the same if you're going to tax also property na you're gonna pay property tax so, this is tax imposed on property, whether real or personal niya, in proportion to its value or in accordance with other reasonable basis. But if you are going to tax for the rights, ang tawagan na excise taxes. 
This is defined as tax on exercise of certain rights and privileges. Like for example, income taxes. Ngano na kay income tax because ni taka ng privilege na magka income as well as estate tax, donors tax, and value added taxes. So mao nang sa S the paid subject matter. So let's go to purpose. Again, there are only two purposes. Magyud ang tax, revenue tax ba siya? Tax that is levied without a specific purpose. It is collected to augment government funds in general. Or for regulation, ba na siya na tax or regulatory tax? These taxes are those intended to achieve certain social or economic goals. Examples are certain duties on imports. So, example, kita mga Pinoy, ganahan mangyid kayo itag mga imported. So, what will happen? Wala na yung mupalit o mga local products na ito. Sometimes, the government imposes taxes. Like, for example, these duties on imports, labi na kung gikan sa ibang bansa, in order to promote our own products na daghan ang mupalit sa ato. So, because of these taxes, mumahal na pag-ayo ang presyo sa ila, ha? Makakumpit-kumpit na ta. So, as to graduation, so, naamang ko yung klase-klase na tax based sa graduation or rates, ako na nang nasulti kanina, is it a fixed amount or a fixed rate or progressive ba siya? The higher the tax basis, the higher the tax rate, regressive the higher the tax base, the lower the tax rate, or is it based on a table or ranges mo nang graduated? So, mo na. So, we are already through with SPG. Let's go to DAO. As to determination of the amount, how do you determine? Pwede siya specific tax. A specific tax, mang good, is a tax or a percentage, pero itimes ni mo siya sa volume or weight or of the quantity of the goods as measured by tools, instruments, or standards. So, Kanang basihan niya is ang weight or physical volume. Pero na po ad valorem tax. Na ang tawag ining ad valorem tax, these are taxes, percentage, na nakabase sa value of the property. Assessed value, market value, and etc. Ad valorem tax. So let's go to A. As to authority, kung kinsa ang mag-collect sa taxes, we have national taxes na ang magkuha yun ang national like Bureau of Internal Revenue tapoy local taxes na ang magkuha ang mga local government units let's say for example real estate taxes mao na siya as to authority and the last as to who bears the burden who bears the burden we have direct tax kini na mga taxes on a specific person and etc. cannot be shifted to another person. Kung ikaw na taxan, ikaw yun magbayad na. Nata yung mga indirect taxes. Ang indirect taxes, that is your burden at first. However, you can shift it. You can pass it to another person. Like for example, value-added tax. Ang liable mangin sa value-added tax are those companies na noabot o daghan kayo silang mga sales So, the VAT na ilang liability is 12% based on their sales. However, ginapasa mo na nila sa mga final consumers. So, those are examples of indirect taxes. So, those are the type of taxes. And if we go back and summarize these things, sa tax bill, let's say for example, hatag na tag example, na ay nahitabo na daghan kay nanguli diri sa Pilipinas for example na mga OFWs tanan halos nanguli diri so in order to regulate that tanan mga muuli dapat taksan sila sample tawago natong balikbayan tax so na ay nag-author sa Congress because ang bills magsugod magin sa Congress na ay nag-author sa Congress balikbayan tax so kung mag-author ka o lo 
tax bill. Kini may ipang sulod. Kinsa ba ang taxan? Ang person ba na muuli? O ang property na iyang dala? Diha, nakabutang. Unsa may manner of collection? Kas araba, pag uli. Or pwede tagitagihon into annually, quarterly, or monthly. Sa ito subtaxation, haman sabi sa taxan, sa local ba kung hain siya nagpuyo? Kung kinsa may mukuha sa tax po niya? Or sa national ba siya magbayad? Kung sa may purpose sa tax, for additional revenues or regulatory purpose, siguro pag in ato, regulatory purpose, kay dili pwede manguli tanan ang mga OFWs na isa-isa diritsyo tanan. Apportionment of tax, Asa mga paadto ang tax? Sa national na ba? 30% ba sa local? Portionment of tax na? O sa may rate? Fixed amount ba? Fixed rate ba? Progressive ba? Or regressive or graduated? O sa mga sabi na kind of tax? Direct tax ba siya? Or else o sa pag-compute? Add value them ba? Based sa value niya as a person? Or Pwede ba specific tax based sa weight ng balikbayan? So, those are the details found in the tax bill. Fact 3. Some elaboration or specification can be issued by the Executive Department to clarify gray areas of the law and avoid misunderstandings. Ako na nang nasultig ganina na even if naabot na sa President ang law, yung ipermahan na himo na siyang law sometimes na mga gray areas. So, ang Executive Department will publish guidelines or specifications para mawala na siya na gray areas. Fact 4. There are a lot of sources of tax laws. So, ato na siyang enumerate. So, asa ka magbasa ng tax laws? Pwede sa Constitution. Pwede sa International Treaty. Mga agreement ni sa with the Philippines and other governments. Pwede sa National Internal Revenue Code or Republic Act 8424. Pero it has already been amended to train law under Republic Act 10963. Pwede po mutanaw ka sa Tariff and Customs Code na apoy tax laws related na naa sa RA 1125, the creation of Court of Tax Appeals. So, gamay ra na knowledge kining Court of Tax Appeals kung maglalis-lalis na gani about tax BIR versus you, for example, added to mo mag-away-away sa Court of Tax Appeals. And we have another Republic Act 7716, the EVAT Law. Pwede po presidential decrees and executive orders. Mono na siyang ginahimo ng Executive Department, pati ang number 7. Revenue Regulations by the Department of Finance. The Department of Finance maunay head-head kibali ng Bureau of Internal Revenue. So, makatagsad na siya ng Revenue Regulations and Revenue Memorandum Circulars, Custom Memorandum Circulars, and BIR Rulings. Kanang 6, 7, and 8 mauna siyang murag Uh, in layman's point of view, the guidelines and specifications issued by the Executive Department kay under mo na sila tanan sa Executive Department para mawala ang gray area on the implementation of the law. Although number 9, court decisions. Katong mga naglalis about taxation provision and etc. Siyempre, the court will have to decide and the decision of the court will become part of the law also. And number 10, local government code and local tax ordinances. Kining mga local government units, like for example, a certain municipality, pwede sab na sila maghimo ng tax ordinances. So, ang legislative nila, kanang what do we call as sangguni ang bayan. Pag sa province po, sangguni ang panlalawigan, sila na maghimo ng mga ordinance. So, ang executive is mayor, paubos, mga kuan head sa mga departments. So, those are the sources of tax laws. 
So let's go back. So that's it for the details of the levy. Master na kayo mo sa levy. So we are already through discussing the money, the inherent power of the state, as well as the legislative in nature. So it's only the billing limited by constitutional and inherent limitation. We know that taxation power is powerful. However, it still has its limits. Ang tawag, constitutional and inherent limitations. Let's elaborate on those lim limitations. Let's start with inherent limitations. Ang atong mnemonics for inherent limitations is PINES. P stands for public purpose. Kaya ang tax can only be collected and disbursed for public purpose. Dili pwede na gamito ni siya pagpahimo ng swimming pool ni Senator and dili ni siya pwede for personal reasons ng mga politiko and other people na naa sa government. I is for international committee. Taxation law should respect other states. Pod nila nga mga law. So you can tax other territories than state as a matter of respect in general. But if you have any agreement, treaties and etc., you need also to respect it. So the bottom line is you need to respect other states and if there are agreements, you need to follow them. That is international committee. Non-delegability of the taxing power as we've said, taxation power is essentially a legislative function, so meaning tax laws should be approved by the Senate and the Congress or the legislative branch of the government. When it comes to local, it should be the sangguni ang bayan or sangguni ang panlalawigan. It cannot be delegated into the executive branch and the judiciary branch. Another inherent limitation is the exemption of the government. Of course, if an agency is performing governmental functions, they should be exempted from tax. And the last is situs of taxation or territoriality. So, the taxation law is only applicable in its territories. And we have already discussed the situs of taxation. So that's on the inherent limitations. Constitutional limitations. Let's use Jupin vase as the mnemonic para dali na ma-memorize. Isa sa mga constitutional limitation ng due process, dili pwede basta-basta makakolekta ang government without following the due process. So, if ever feeling niya, kulang ang tax na imong gibayran, Dili pwede diritso ka agad sila kuha. Instead, maghatag pa sila og mga notices and they will let you explain. O sa higa maabot pa ni sa Court of Tax Appeals or the Supreme Court. The point is, they need to follow the due process para makakolekta. Second is uniformity in taxation. Uniformity and equity in taxation, mang ni siya. So you can say that uniform ang taxation if ever ang force of the taxation law is the same bisag asa pa na lugar sa country may ngumputag equity in taxation it does not mean na dapat equal ang taxes na bayaran ng mga subjects instead progressive dapat ang taxation that means the higher the capacity of the taxpayer to pay the higher the income the higher the property value, dapat mas dako ang taxation na makuha sa ilaha. So that's uniformity and equity in taxation. We have E, equal protection of laws. The law should protect everyone. There should be no discrimination. So if ever, dapat tanan, subjects under the territory of the Philippines or citizens, shall have equal access, for example, sa courts of law. Next is progressive scheme in taxation. Here in the Philippines, we only have progressive scheme in taxation. The higher the value or the tax basis, the higher the tax. Uh, for example, sa income, 
the higher imong income, the higher the tax rate, the higher the taxes that you are going to pay. Next is under the Constitution, exempted sa taxes, sa revenue, sa assets and grants and endowments, pati donations or contributions ang mga educational institution. Labi na, if ever, those assets, contributions, endowments, and donations is used for educational purposes. Ang next E is exemption of charitable institutions, churches, mosques, convents, not-for-profit cemeteries, and all lands, buildings, and improvements actually directly and exclusively used for religious and charitable or educational purposes. So, dili taksan ang ilahang mga non-current assets, mga land, mga real properties that are really used for religious, charitable, and educational purposes. Next constitutional limitation is dili pwede ipreso ang isa ka individual for non-payment of poll tax. For example, wa ka naglukat og sidula, it's not uh, a crime na makapreso ka agad ka pag di ka magbayad ng sidula. Number 7, wala dapat i-budget gikan sa public funds para igastos for any church, sect or system of religion. So, bawal na ang ito ang uh, funds sa government gamiton for any church, sect, or system of religion. Another end is, no money shall be paid out of the treasury except in pursuance with appropriation made by law. Dapat nakabudget tanan gastusan. Ang kana na budget should be made into law known as General Appropriations Act. So, pag wala na siya, wala na siya na-itemize dito, dili pwede gastusun ang kwarta gikan sa treasury. Number 9, is non-impairment of the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to review tax cases. Pag nana siya sa korte, nana siya sa Supreme Court, dapat dili na siya hilabtan. Number 10, a constitutional power is the veto power of the president in any particular items of the appropriation, revenue, or tariff bill. So, pag naay mga tax laws, that is to be passed pa. Ang last man na, if napasar na sa Congress and sa Senate, is papermahan na sa president. Pero the president can exercise veto power, dili siya ganahan sa mga items. Pero dili ni siya absolute na power. Kaya pag dili ni niya maaktuhan, di siya makaingon na mag-veto power siya within 30 days, mahimo siyang law. So, it's not absolute. Now, if ever i-veto po niya, tapos dili ganahan ang Senate and Congress sa iyang giveto, they can, the Congress can vote, and two-thirds, pag maingon na ipasar ang law, mapasar gid na siya. Number 11, the appropriation or the budget, Revenue and tariff bills shall originate exclusively sa House of Representatives or the Congress. However, the Senate can propose amendments. Number 12. C. Concurrence of the majority of all the members of the Congress is needed to grant tax exemption. So, kung na tax exemption, dapat it is given by the Congress. No, two-thirds, ano uh, not two-thirds, it's majority of all the members of the Congress dapat ang ma-approve, Anna. And the last, each local government unit has the power to create its own sources of revenue and shall have a share in the national taxes. So, ang LGU, again, like for example, municipality, the sangguni ang bayan can pass local ordinances na magkuha ng taxes, or any source of revenue para mabuhi sila. And ang ikaduha, the LGU shall have a share in the national taxes. As we already know, nagyud sila share sa national taxes. Sa Bureau of Internal Revenue, kung nakakulik o ginani, 60% will go to the LGUs, the cities, munip municipalities, provinces, and barangays. 40% will go to the national. So that's it for constitutional limitations. So, let's go back. 
Again, if you are going to describe the characteristics of taxation, number one, it's generally payable in money. Number two, it's an inherent power of the state. Number three, it's legislative in nature. Number four, it's limited by constitutional and inherent limitations. So, these things, the MILL has been discussed thoroughly. So, tapos na ta sa part 2. So, let's go to part 3. The first topic that we're gonna discuss is taxes versus other terms. Okay, basin maglibog. So, let's differentiate taxes from first subsidy. Kinigong subsidy is an aid by the government to an individual or private enterprise. So, it's very different from taxes. Kay pag subjects of tax, like for example, us, ang tax is a burden. While subsidy, medyo malipay ta kay tagaan ta og tabang ini ng government. Although, para makatag ang government og subsidy, magkulik ta yun ng tax. Next term is revenues. Revenues is general in nature. It includes all the funds or income derived by the government. Isa lang ang taxes sa revenues. We have internal revenues. These are taxes imposed other than duties on imports and exports. Tariffs. Tariffs are the duties payable on goods imported or exported. The term tariff and custom duties are used interchangeably in the tariff and customs code. Next is ang utang. Ang utang arises from contract, whereas tax taxes arises from sovereignty. The debt is payable in kind or money, and taxes is only payable generally in money. The debt is subject to set off. Unsa may meaning ane. That means if na kay utang sa isa ka person, pero na po kay receivable ana na person, pwede i-quits, pwede ma-set off. Pero pag taxes na gani, kung na kay overpayment of taxes, or uh, unya na kay bayroon nun na tax, you cannot say na i-set off na lang, i-quits na lang. Because the government and the subject of taxation are not debtors and creditors as to each other. Diri as a debt, interest depends upon the agreement of the parties. Most of the time, nagyod na sila'y agreement ka ng mangutangay o ang creditor as to interest. Diri as a taxation, the interest is only computed kung madelay pagpay ang tax ang taxpayer. So, no imprisonment. Pag di ka kabayad ng utang, there is no imprisonment unless the debt arises from crimes. Pero tistingi, ayaw pagbayad ng tax, then there's a big chance na he must rehas ka. Next, custom duties. Custom duties are imposed on imported or exported goods. It is only one of the taxes. So, taxes is broader than custom duties lang. Next, license fee. And taxes is coming from the taxation power of the state. The license fee emanates from police power. So, as I've said earlier, ang police power is very much concerned with the regulation and control sa society. So, ang license fee, the purpose is regulatory and the amount is limited as to expenses of regulation and control. It is imposed on the exercise of a right or privilege. Non-payment of license makes the business illegal. However, kung kintahin na kay business and you have not paid taxes, it does not make your business illegal. Pero kung license fee na, mahimo na siyang illegal. Special Assessment This is levied on land and based wholly on the benefits received. Ang taxes, dili. There are sometimes, pag dato kay ka, dili ka maka-enjoy sa benefits of the taxes. Kay mayaman man ka. Ang mga poor, ang kasagaran, maka-benefit sa taxes. Cash collected for special assessment is for the recovery of the cost or maintenance of the improvement. Taxes, dili inana ang taxes. Penalty. Of course, Ang taxes is different from penalty. Kaya ang penalty is a punishment because of the injurious act 
by the government or by the in private individuals. So, kining penalty, punishment ni siya. Taxes dili mo na siya punishment. It comes from sovereignty lagi. And then, the taxation can only be imposed by the government. Pero kining penalty can be imposed by the government o private individuals. It may arise from contract and may be paid in kind. Ang taxes, it's not arising from contract. Tapos dili po siya pwede bayaran in kind. It's generally payable in money. And the last is toll. Toll is a demand of proprietorship. Taxation, again, is a demand of sovereignty. It is a compensation for use of another property and taxes. Dili inana. May be imposed by a private individual and taxes cannot be imposed by a private individual or entity. The amount is based on the cost of property or its improvement. So that's it. Taxes versus other terms. So the next topic is how to reduce the tax burden. So there are ways. First is exemption. Pa-exempt ka. However, it's difficult na mapa-exempt ka because sa, under sa constitutional limitation, the exemption shall be uh, voted by the Congress, majority of all the members of the Congress, and it could be expressed or implied. Tapos pag na mga gray areas, the interpretation of grants of exemption is construed against the person or entity claiming the exemption. So, negatively biased siya sa imo. Of course, we have compromise. Sometimes, the government may reduce the tax liability to a minimum amount. Why? There are reasons. Example, the taxpayer is financially incapacitated. So, yan ang i-reduce into minimum amounts. Natay what do we call as equitable recoupment. So, claim for refund which is prevented by prescription may be allowed to be used as payment for unsettled tax liabilities if both taxes arise from the same transaction and overpayment is made and underpayment is due. So, may meaning ane. Pag nasubraan kag bayad og tax, you can claim for refund. However, na due date ang pag-claim ng refund. That is 2 years from the moment na nagbayad ka. So, what if natapos ang 2 years? So, meaning, nag-prescribe na imong claim for refund. However, pag gamito ng equitable recoupment, pwede paghihapon ni mo may use as payment for unsettled tax liabilities tung refund na nag na. Next is transformation. Kining transformation is very useful kung daghan kayo kag competitors. Pagdagang manggud kag competitors as manufacturer, imong i-absorb ang additional taxes imposed by the government without passing it to the buyers. Kay mo da ko ang presyo, mapildi ka sa imong competitors. Now, the effect is taas kayo ang imong tax. However, as manufacturer, pwede ni mo i-increase ang quantity ng imong production. Pag i-increase ni mo ang quantity of your production, mugamay ang cost per unit. We all know that as businessman. So, although taas imong tax, gamay man imong production cost, so mabawi na. That is what do we call as transformation. We have also the capitalization technique. The capitalization technique, kung seller ka, pwede ni mo i-lower ang price ng imong ginabaligya. However, uh, taxes should be shouldered by the buyer. That's what do we call as capitalization. Pwede po ding shifting. Ang tax burden ni mo, imong ipasa sa others. Example, sa VAT. Instead na ikaw mo magbayad ng VAT, kay VATable ka, ipasa na sa customer. We have tax avoidance. Ang tax avoidance is escaping payment of tax through legal means. So, dagay examples in eh. For example, kung naa kay company, tapos gusto ni mo gamay imong net income, then, imong i-hire ang imuhang mga kaparinti-parintihan para instead na from personal na bulsa ka maghatag, i-hire ni mo, tagaan ni mo sila og salaries. So, you can claim it as salaries expense, mugamay imong net income, mugamay ang tax. So, that's one of the tax avoidance. 
Another example is, pag-estate ang isgutan or ang imong kayamanan. Pag mamatay ka, imong kayamanan, tax na your estate. So, para gamay ang tax, gamayan ni mo imong estate. How do you do that? Ayaw i-appeal og butang sa imong estate ng mga jewelry na walay evidence ng ownership. Mga jewelry or any properties na walay title. Ayaw na i-appeal para mo gamay ang imong estate tax. So, tax avoidance na siya. Ang imong ipang-appeal, ang kanarang mga lupa na titled or mga buildings and real properties na titled. O di yun madala, gusto yun ni mo mawala ang tax burden, pwede ka mag-evasion which is escaping payment of tax through unlawful means. So that's it on how to reduce the tax burden. Let's go to the next topics. How do we know if the tax system is working? So, we can have principles of a sound tax system. So, you can ask, uh, what are these principles of a sound tax system? It's fat ang ato ang mnemonic. First is fiscal adequacy. So, the tax system is working if the government revenue is sufficient. That's fiscal adequacy. And of course, the tax system is working if the tax system can be implemented conveniently. The tax administration is free from confusion. That is what do we call as administrative feasibility. And the last is theoretical justice. Theoretical justice, the tax collected should be based on the taxpayer's ability to pay. So that's why here in the Philippines, progressive ang ato. The higher the tax basis, the higher the tax rate. Or the higher the tax basis, the higher the tax ang bayaran. So that's theoretical justice. So, money and principles of a sound tax system. A sound tax system is fiscally adequate, it's administratively feasible, and it's following theoretical justice. Next, what is double taxation? So, there are two types of double taxation. The first one is direct duplicate taxation. Kini siya, nataksan yung gagkaduha. This is prohibited under the law where the subject is taxed twice by the same taxing authority within the same jurisdiction and for the same purpose in the same taxing period with the same kind of tax. So, dili na siya pwede. Pwede ni siya i-contest ni mo as a taxpayer or a subject of taxation. Naman sa indirect double taxation. Indirect double taxation is not legally objectionable. Naman yung mga things, income, rights, and etc. na madubli yun pag tax, pero indirect lang. Let's say, for example, um, a corporation, isa ka sa mga shareholder ng isa ka corporation. So, ang, kung ang corporation is doing well na sa net income, so, kana ilang net income, taxa na og 30% ni government, kana nga net income. So, it's taxed once already. Now, after getting the tax, you have the net income after tax, pwede na siya i-distribute sa mga shareholders as dividends. Now, pagdawat ni mo ana as a shareholder, kay na dividends mang ka, taxa na pong kabalik. So, murag kaduha siya na taxan ang isa ka an item which is the net income however that is not legally objectionable okay na na siya uh, there are also some cases labi na og resident filipino ka na nataksa na gani ka sa gawas sa imong income didto taksa na sad ka diri sa Philippines siguro na yung mga issues ani siguro lang it's my opinion lang like for example si Manny Pacquiao na na ay winnings didto sa gawas taksan man na didto Tapos wag about dito, taxa na sa siguro siya. So, that is what do we call as indirect double taxation. The last question, what is the taxpayer suit? Taxpayer suit is a suit by a taxpayer. Kaya nagreklamo siya sa government or its representative for illegal disbursement of public funds. Kaya dapat lagi public funds should be disbursed for public purpose. So, na ako isa ka experience ani, no, not experience, knowledge, ng isa ka 
munisipyo ni Palit o Beach Resort. So, pwede na siya i-contest ng taxpayer. Nga nung gigastos ang pondo for that one. Nadili man na siya for public purpose ka ng Beach Resort na gipalit. Unless, uh, ma-justify nila na ka na himuuna siya o something na pwede gamito ng public. So, that's it for our lesson. The nature and general principles of taxation. Again, you are welcome to play and replay this para ma-master ninyo siya. So, this is the end of my presentation. So, you can leave your comments, suggestions, and questions sa atong group. And stay tuned sa next na mga video lectures na ko.